Hello everyone, welcome to today's Novich webinar, Landscape Modeling and Documentation with Lens Design. The presentation will give you an overview of Lens Design Modeling tools and will explain the BIM advantages of the program. It will introduce tools like terrain modeling, vegetation, 2D documentation, hardscape and animation. And uh, the presentation will also address the recently developed BIM workflows to Revit and Archicad. So a webinar packed with information. And let me introduce the presenter today. It's, there's two. Uh, there's Frances Salla, who is an architect and uh, is also the product manager of Visual Arc and Land Design since 2010, by the way. And also uh, Elam Gavuli who is has a PhD in Urban and Architectural Management, and she's the Product Manager of Lens Design, with seven years of academic experience in landscape and urban planning programs, and with over 10 years of experience as landscape architect. You're in great hands today. And let me tell you a little bit about Novage. Uh, Novage is changing the way designers purchase 3D software, offering more choices, more freedom, best advice, and faster service. And this is where you can find Lens Design. Now, without further ado, I'm going to share Ilam's screen so she can tell you all about Lens Design. Take it away, Ilam. Thank you, Barbara. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our today's webinar. Uh, I'm going to start with an introduction of Lens Design. We will have an overview of the program and then we will have a live demo uh, to see how a landscape design project can develop in Lens Design. Uh, Lens Design is a professional landscape software with BIM technology. It, has, uh, it works for producing drawings, uh, model your project with 3D, in 3D, it automatically generates the list of plants and other materials, and there are several tools for animation and visualization of the project. There are two versions uh, that are working with the same license. One version, version is working in AutoCAD and Civil 3D, and another version works on top of Rhino. Uh, Lens design is used in the field of landscape architecture, in current infrastructure for civil engineering project, uh, in urban planning projects and in environmental projects. For example, you can model a forest easily with Lance design. Let's see its main features. Lance design has an extensive plant database with more than 8,000 plant species right now. The plant database include, uh, includes plants in 2D, 3D, and the botanical information of plant species. It has also several filters that let us to select the adequate plant based on uh, plant type, climate, soil type, etc. There are uh, different display modes for plants. One is conceptual. You can shift between conceptual and another one, the detailed one, just by one click. And by another click, you get the realistic model of the project. Uh, you can shift between 2D and 3D display modes just by one click. As you see in 2D, we have different uh, blocks used for 2D representation, and uh, in 3D, we will have realistic blocks. Inside of plant database, we have a plant editor that lets us to modify an, ex an existing plant and save it as a new plant or as the modified version of the same plant species. So in case that you don't find your uh, desired plant in plant database, you can produce it or modi by modifying an existing similar plant. For uh, inserting vegetation, there are several modes. As you see, you can insert them individually. Also, you can uh, insert them by paint, like the paint of windows. You move the mouse and uh, Lance Design will place plants. You can convert points into plants just by one click. You can convert blocks into plants as you see here. Um, and well, you can insert a row of plants uh, with different plant species, with different combination. It can be done yeah, or a group of plants by forest command. Also, you can insert 
shrubs in a line, linear meter or in a, a square meter a density or insert ground covers. Also, we have added topiary tool recently. So uh, with this tool, as you see, you can cover any 3D shape with uh, plant species that are suitable for topiary. There's a specific list of uh, topiary plants inside our plant database. Uh, so you indicate the plant and uh, cover that 3D shape with uh, plants. Uh, in this way, also, you can get the list of uh, topiary at the end of the day calculated by lands design. There are powerful terrain modeling tools inside the program that let us to produce terrain by points, lines, or combination of points and lines. Once the terrain is generated, you can easily modify it with control points. You can create a path on the terrain. Uh, create different cotton fields and earth moving operation on top of this terrain, divide the terrain, for example, and assign different texture and material to each part, get the area of each part of the terrain, and finally get the uh, automatically calculated volume of earth moving operation on the terrain. Uh, in addition, we have the possibility to import terrain from the web. As you see um, here, you can look for the location of the project on the map and then uh, indicate the border of that area and land design will generate the 3d model of the selected area the precision in this method is one sample each 30 meters and it's quite useful for uh, medium to large scale projects that we have no information about their topography in addition you can insert the 3d shape 3d mesh of the selected area with the satellite image, if you wish. You can have uh, 2D and 3D of the same terrain. You get the topographic contours of the terrain, and then you can work on uh, earth moving operation on top of this terrain. Uh, also, there's another possibility with the same uh, tool that let us to uh, insert the buildings, the existing buildings. In this example, we are going to import uh, Central Park of New York. As you see, we get all surrounding uh, buildings of the Central Park and, uh, of course, the terrain of the Central Park. Plans design contains also dynamic documentations that let us to have the list of plans, furniture, irrigation, zones, etc., just by one click. We have also the command for adding the image of plants and adding labels and producing different types of documentation. There are parametric hard escape tools that let us to have parametric walls and curves, parametric paths, parametric fence, and there's a block library for furniture inside the program. Of course, in addition, you may add your own blocks from other supported programs, for example, from SketchUp or from other uh, 3D blocks. There are irrigation tools inside Lands Design that let us to design the irrigation system uh, in 2D. You design the system and Lands Design will calculate the volume of uh, material. So it quantifies the pipes and sprinklers and emitters that is used during the design process. For visualization tools, we have walk mode. You can walk through the project. We have virtual simulation. We have sun and shadow tools. There are several possibilities for rendering the project. And there's a, uh, some image filters. The animation that you see here is created with land, the mo is modeled with land design as a, and um, rendered with Enscape. In Rhino version, we have the possibility to have parametric architectural projects. Um, we have Grasshopper, and Lens Design has Grasshopper components. So uh, let's see just a simple example of what you can do with Grasshopper. You can do uh, all the design process with parametric algorithms. So as you see here, we are going to populate this area with plants. The height of plants be dependent to their distance to the axis of the path. There's a path in the middle. And uh, by moving the path, everything 
changed automatically. Uh, this is the advantage of parametric uh, design. Well, actually, it's a simple example. There are unlimited possibilities that you can reach with through Grasshopper, um, but it's not necessary to learn Grasshopper in order to work with lens design. It's quite an advanced uh, step. Uh, a new thing is that right now Lens Design works, or you can open Lens Design project inside Revit through Rhino inside Revit technology. So as you see here, you can open the project inside Revit. If you do any kind of modification on terrain or on vegetation, for example, you will see that those modifications will be will appear in Revit uh, environment as well. The design process with lens design is summarized in this short video. Uh, you can import the terrain or create it uh, by using the uh, topographic contours or point clouds, for example. Lens design also support point clouds. Once you create uh, the terrain, you can modify it easily with its control points. Uh, you can zonify the terrain in different or the project in different zones. So you get the area of each zone. You assign different material and different hatch to each zone, um, and continue. You can continue with inserting plants individually, or in a row, or in a group. Well, plants may have natural variation if you indicate that. So you indicate the percentage of natural variation. The row of plant may be combined with different species. So in that, uh, that form, you may have a, a more interesting row of plants. In addition, you insert, uh, as you see, hard escape tools and blocks into the project. So if you have any kind of a wall or building or stairs, for example, you can work on top of this terrain and do that kind of um, development. In any moment of the project, you can shift between 3D and 2D just by one click. For example, if you are more comfortable to work in 2D environment, you can do uh, modifications in, in 2D, and then you shift to 3D and see that that uh, change appears in 3D as well. By one click, you get the list of uh, different objects like plants, furniture, or irrigation. And finally, you render the project. Well, the, the workflow that we recommend uh, starts from a drawing. So it, it starts from AutoCAD, Rhino, or Civil 3D. In continue with land design, you model the landscape and uh, it contains beam technology. So in continue, you get the list of materials and the, you get the data so you can export the data to Excel or PDF or your, you can print your drawings. For visualization, you may apply a render. So uh, there are several renders that are compatible with land design. Of course, it depends on which platform in which platform you are working with land design if you are working in AutoCAD there are different renders than in Rhino uh, version you may apply virtual reality so there are some headsets that uh, you can walk through the project in that way or you can print your project with a 3D printer uh, at any moment of the project you may have collaboration with other programs like SketchUp, Revit, or 3D Max, you can import or export models in, the, in this way. Um, and also, it's nice to mention that uh, you can import geographic tools, um, geographic formats like GIS files, DEM file, digital elevation models, or point clouds into Lens Design. Lens Design is able to generate um, terrain by importing DEM files, for example. These are some projects that are done with Lens Design recently. So in summary, Lens Design is available for Rhino, AutoCAD, and Civil 3D. There is a 90-day free trial of the program. The licenses are permanent. Uh, you will have free technical support. 
the educational license is quite at a reduced price. And the development of the program has been based on our users' feedback. So uh, any feedback would be welcome to our team. And uh, thank you. Up to now, is there any question? No, no questions so far, but I welcome everybody to type them in. And, um, you know, this is a great chance to uh, speak with the uh, makers of lens design. So if you have questions mm -hmm. about compatibility with other tools, uh, which I know Ilan already answered, but if you may have other questions, uh, please let us know. And I know uh, while we wait, I know that next there'll be a hands-on demo by Francesc, right? Yes. Yes. So I'm going to share Francesc's screen round and still wait for a question. Um, please feel free to type them in at any time, comment. We're here for you. And by we, I mean that they are. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. Frances, we can see your screen now. All right, thank you very much. So I'm basically gonna uh, show what we have seen in this uh, Alhams presentation, but with a live demo, so we can see an overview of the most interesting features of land design. So first of all, I'm gonna introduce mm, the toolbar, so we can find here the land object distributed into the commands that let us insert vegetation elements, so we can insert them individually uh, from points, uh, replacing blocks or in a paint mode. We can insert also plants arranged in, uh, in rows or in forests. We can insert shrubs, ground covers, or uh, wrap any piece of geometry in a freeform shape with uh, the topiary command. We've got also some civil work objects like uh, walls, fences, stairs, or paths. Here we can find a command to generate rows of elements that we can browse from the land design library. And finally, we can find here under this terrain icon, all the commands to do operations with terrains. Okay, or also the one to import them from the web as we have seen, or to calculate the volume of earth movement moving. Okay, uh, we take a look at the second uh, tab. We can find the documentation commands those for uh, inserting sprinklers or arranging them in an array or for creating pipes, those for quantifying the elements of uh, we've got in the model. Okay, we can quantify a uh, plan list, pipe list, uh, urban furniture list, sprinklers, also the terrain uh, land movement, and we can export those lists, all right? We can find also some commands to insert tags, pictures, labels, dimensions, which all of them will be linked to the uh, well, to the species that we reference. We can calculate the slopes that will be projected onto the terrain. We can, we can add uh, areas to calculate the, well, the, the, the areas of uh, any, any contour. We can assign, uh, assign plant shadows. And uh, finally, we've got some additional commands to, for example, open the edit panel that I am already, uh, I have already open here. The lands on initial panel, maybe I can open it for later on when we want to create some, some animation or virtual tool, virtual tour. And finally, we've got some shortcut to open the plant database. There is an image filter application built in the program. We can uh, load images and apply some filters and well, set some viewpoint uh, in order to create renders or navigate through the project with a walk mode. Uh, in the first tab, we can find all the commands all grouped in one single toolbar. So it is pretty much up to each one how they want to, to use, all right? So I'm gonna leave them uh, docked here. Maybe I'm gonna put it up there so we have more space for uh, working. So let's take a look at the edit panel because this is from where we will be able to uh, edit everything that we select in the model, not only visual uh, land design objects, but Rhino elements, okay? First of all, when nothing is selected, we can see here all the list of uh, species that are being used. So from this panel, we'll be able to select one or another, okay, and uh, well, edit, for example, the way they are displayed in 2D, uh, in elevation, or in the different uh, display modes, okay? Also from here, uh, we will be able to switch from one representation to another. Right now, we are seeing the realistic representation in a billboard mode. 
This is quite useful when we have a project with a big number of plants and we still want to, to work in a, in a fast, in a fast way, right? So uh, the plants are displayed as uh, billboards uh, with some texture and transparency maps. Since this is a small project, we can switch to a 3D, 3D view and uh, work with uh, 3D plants. Okay, the realistic uh, representation is the one that gets all the textures on the, on the files and uh, the nicest one, okay? Um, basically, this is the representation that can store different uh, appearances according to seasons. So we can switch from uh, spring season to winter, for example, and some of these plants also will change uh, their appearance in the model. When we need to shot a render from this uh, scene, these plants will be replaced for even a more detailed plant okay, for getting a, a very high quality uh, render result. I'm going to switch this back to spring. And we can also see the other representation mode. For example, we've got here the elevations, conceptual. These are quite useful for a large scale project. We just want to see the volumetry of, of the uh, urban plant, detailed, and finally, realistic, which is the nicest one and the one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave uh, by now. Um, also, from this uh, upper side of the, of the dialog, we can switch from the 3D representation to 2D. So all the land elements will switch to this 2D representation. And when we work with this setting from the top viewport, we'll get the feeling that we are working in 2D. Got to hide the grid. And uh, well, but we will be actually working with uh, elements that have a 3D representation as well. All right, I'm going to switch back to 3D perspective and we can start by uh, inserting some some plants here to to see how it goes um also when we select any object well here we have the object selected on the right hand of the the, the edit panel we can see all the commands or operations that we can apply for this object and in the mm, lower part we can see all the properties of the plant so we can for example change the height of this plant we can change the, the species and do any anything we want on that uh, selected object. Okay. Now let's insert a, a new plant here. So basically, I'm going to run the plant command, which shows me a list of uh, the species that I have used already. But of course, if you start a new document, we'll get this uh, list empty. So then um, you will need to browse for the plant database. And here we can see all the, um, the list of plants according to uh, some uh, filters. So we can select plants according to their characteristics. Okay, we can just click on the desired uh, characteristics or details and finding the, the well, suite, uh, the suitable uh, plant. Also, we can search a plant from, uh, from this uh, search uh, field, or we can see some uh, groups of plants Okay. For example, we've got a few of them that come with uh, the render, uh, some other for uh, well, those that are customized because we can create new species here based on uh, existing one or starting from scratch. We have some plants that are uh, appropriate for vertical gardens, all right? And also we can create our favorites. So we can just uh, click on this uh, heart icon so I just select the, the, the species, but we can create our list of favorite plant species and have them grouped in that in that list. Um, all right, I'm going to search, for example, for a, a lemon tree. So this is citrus lemon. Uh, here it is. And maybe we can check its uh, properties. Uh, in, in order that we could eventually change any detail of this species. So I'm going to click on this properties button. Here we can find all the morphology and characteristics uh, details. If we want to change any of these uh, data, we can just check this edit uh, button. And now we can change any detail we want. And here under the display tab, we can also switch the different uh, to the crown or the, or the block assigned 
as a 2D representation from another block that is provided by line design. We can uh, take a look at the different 2D blocks. We can find them in the library. And of course, if you have your own 2D block, you can add it to that folder, and this will be available for the 2D representation of any desired species, right? I'm gonna cancel this. And the same thing goes for the conceptual 3D shape, the daily 3D shape, elevation. And here, under the render tab, we can find here all the uh, realistic plants that come along with the program. There are over 600 uh, different plants. Of course, since there are 8,000 species in the plant database, there is no single, no, there is not an individual uh, realistic representation for each species. That means that some of them, uh, well, cover uh, many different species according to similar uh, characteristics. All right. So here we can select any of these files, and we can even uh, edit them. For example, with a plant editor, that it's a kind of application that comes with line design we can uh, modify the appearance of the, of the plant according to all these parameters. Okay, we can play with all these uh, sliders. We can assign a texture for the trunk. Okay, we can uh, do many, many modifications until we find the desired appearance. We can disable the, the fruits, load a new picture, and many other the, uh, details. Also, uh, when we are done with the changes, we can assign these changes to a new uh, definition and give it assign it to to the well the, the the season left okay that in this case we've got a few other definitions that are already taken some some of these uh, uh, seasons so basically uh, this file type will uh, store the different definitions and when we render the scene according to the season we have uh, set to the document the render will show one appearance for this species or another okay also, there are some uh, other uh, templates for creating uh, new plants from scratch, as you can see, as you can see here. All right, I'm gonna say no to changes, cancel this, and just wanna select the lemon tree and insert it in my in my model. All right, I can insert a few uh, elements, but with one in this case, I'm, I'm done. Later on, as we have seen before, we can edit this object, change the uh, head, change the species, and uh, change any other details. Okay. We can even overwrite the season to a specific uh, plant, and um, and just select another another season. Now, before we see uh, how to insert more objects, let's uh, generate the the areas. Uh, for this project, which is one of the first steps in the design process, get an idea uh, of how the areas will be distributed in, in, your, in your design. So let's uh, work from the top viewport. I'm going to switch to 2D representation now. And okay, I'm going to insert an area on that empty, uh, empty space. Okay. I've got a few areas already created, as you can see here. Into the areas are represented with a hatch pattern and a, and a title. Um, and there are two ways of inserting them. So I'm going to run the zonify command. I can either pick in one empty area, or I, I, can, uh, I can select uh, these boundaries options from the command line and select uh, well an existing uh, closed curve. Okay. We'll choose this option. I'm going to give it a name. Uh, select uh, some specific uh, pattern, all right, and maybe I'm gonna leave these squares. It's, it's fine. And also here from the material, I can browse for any uh, material that I've uh, got in the in the library of materials. Plantisan also provides a few of them, so I'm gonna choose uh, one for flooring. Let's say, for example, this one. And we've got a few uh, shortcuts to change the reflectivity or transparency. But in any case, if you've got any render engine uh, plugin for Rhino, you can also select the materials provided by this uh, render, okay, selecting another option. Okay. So any material that you have loaded into the scene, uh, no matter which plugin it comes from, will be available here to, to be used for any 
uh, element of Lanza set. I'm going to pick this one now and finally insert uh, the title. Right now, if we switch to a 3D representation, we can see this texture on that on that zone. And um, well, we can already insert a list of zones. So I go to the land documentation, and here we can get a zoning list. And if we take a look at this list, uh, we can see already this background with the corresponding area. We can also enable this uh, sample icon to get a, a proper reference when we see this uh, well, this project in into the. So this will be a list that is uh, constantly linked with the three the models. Any change with you on these areas will be displayed in that in that zoning list. All right. So let's. Um, Let's see some of the terrain modeling tools now. So we've got already a Rhino surface. This is totally uh, Rhino made with uh, surface tools, so we can, you know, modify it through control points. And um, well, there is an option in Land Design that let us assign uh, any object as a terrain. Basically, tag uh, an object as a terrain, and it's available here. And when we do so, we can uh, insert plants onto on top of this surface, and they will detect the uh, position of the surface. So, for example, if I do a couple of copies of this uh, lemon tree over that area, you can see that they automatically uh, are projected on top of the surface. Okay. Um, but of course, this is a surface that won't have all the uh, terrain properties to apply these operations or to calculate the volume of earth moving. So I'm going to delete this surface now and I'm going to create a true land design terrain. Okay. The one that we can create as we have seen importing them from uh, from the from the earth or from uh, GIS data or from the EM files. Okay, um, terrains can be created from points, curves, or curves or a mixture of them and um, we will need first to place this uh, input data into the uh, corresponding elevation that means that we can create you know terrain from this curve but it will be completely flat, flat because we need to uh, elevate these curves to the desired uh, elevation so this is a, a, a simplified example of a typical situation where we've got a, a WVG file with all the contours of a, of a terrain, and we need to elevate these contours according to an interval. So there is a command here under the terrain icon that lets us uh, do this. This elevate curves command will show uh, a dialog where we need to uh, define the star dimension, the increment uh, dimension, for example, two meters, and then we need to draw a line and all the curves that intersect with the line will be elevated according to this uh, interval. So if I select apply, I can see how these curves have been elevated. Maybe two meters is too much. I'm going to change to one. The curves are already selected, so I need to just run the apply button again. And, and that's it. And close the dialog. So I've got my curves in the desired elevation. So I'm ready to create a terrain now. So I'm going to run this, com this terrain command. Terrains are created using a, a Delaunay triangulation uh, method, but we can also choose this gridded surface shape to triangulation option, which will let us uh, get more detail uh, according to the input data. I'm going to select uh, one meter by now. Also, I'm going to define a base uh, for the terrain. Click OK and select the curves. So I get my terrain created now. Uh, actually, these curves were in a specific layer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna hide it now. There, it, there, there, there they are. And um, if I select the terrain, I can see now all the control points of the curves that were used to generate the terrain. So that means that I can still modify the topography of this terrain based on that uh, on those control points. Okay. I can also see that there is a gap here between the boundary of this terrain with the boundary of the 
of the of the park, the existing park. Um, what I'm going to do is to add a new contour. Imagine that you have forgotten to um, include this curve as the terrain input data. So you can do that afterwards. So there is an option here, which is the terrain add contour that will ask to pick a terrain, select curves or points to add as input data, and hit enter, and the terrain will fit with this uh, all this new uh, curve. Okay. Um, something else that we can do here, for example, if we see this uh, in wireframe, um, I would like to trim a little bit the terrain so it fits exactly with this boundary I've got here. So there is an option also to change the boundary of the terrain. So I'm gonna click on this command, select again the terrain, now select this boundary, and the terrain will be adjusted to fit with this, with this perimeter. Okay. Now let's put this back to render it, which is nicer. Uh, let's see how to apply some other operations. Um, first of all, if we select the terrain and we check it in the lands edit panel, we can change any detail that were available when we was available when we created it. Okay, so we can change the, the cell size in order to have a more accurate terrain. Uh, from the input data, we've got all the contours, so we can remove it and the terrain will be calculated according to the to the other uh, geometry. Here we've got the boundary, so we could also remove it and uh, well restore the original terrain. So any operation is uh, kind of stored here and we can uh, well change it, delete it and work in a parametric approach. So let's insert uh, a path and see how it looks like. I've got already a curve here, as you have, uh, you may have noticed, and I'm going to use it for uh, creating um, a path on this terrain. First of all, I can project that curve onto the existing topography, and I can do this with this option over here. So I can adjust this to a terrain, and the curve will try to, uh, well, be a, to adjust to the, to the terrain position. But uh, the terrain will try to be modified according to this object's elevation. Okay. Um, for example, if I put, put this a little bit up, uh, well, the terrain, the path will be a little bit upper in the in the ending part. So let's let's run the path command. I select the terrain. I define the width of the path. So it's just a matter of uh, following the instructions in the command line. I need to define a slope uh, for the for the path. Basically, how the terrain will meet the um, the boundary along the the path. Forty five degrees is fine. And finally, select that that curve. And as you can see, we've got the path included in this in this terrain. Now we can select the terrain, and if we activate the control points, we'll be able to also uh, well select the end control point. Now, here it is. So we can maybe put this uh, down a little bit. All right, um, there is an option to change um, the material of this area. So basically when we add a terrain, uh, path to a terrain, we also add a division on that area and we can select this subdivision from here and change the texture. So we can select a different material uh, for example, uh, from the library, I'm gonna choose some uh, flooring. All right, and maybe I'm gonna select this one. Okay, um, and now, since we have applied here a terrain operation, we can already quantify the volume of earth moving in comparison to the original terrain. So we've got under the documentation tools, the uh, terrain list command that is gonna insert this list. And we'll be able to uh, well know the amount of volume that we have added and the amount of volume that we have subtracted from the terrain with that operation. If we do any change on the terrain, for example, we change the width of this path, we go to the terrain input data, select the path and change this into two, 
you can see that these uh, values have updated uh, automatically. Okay. Now let's insert a few more uh, vegetation here. I'm gonna I'm gonna move this lemon tree on the other side, and I'm gonna insert a forest here. Basically, a forest is a group of uh, plants that can be distributed in a random way or following a, a regular pattern. So I'm gonna work from the from the top viewport. I will uh, run this forest command. So I need to select first some species. Maybe I'm gonna choose one of these existing uh, ones, Acer. Here is interesting to check this natural variation option and also the random rotation because that will make uh, all the plants be slightly different in terms of size and position uh, from one to another and will give us the feeling that uh, each plant is different uh, to, to another, okay, even though they are using the same, uh, the same file, the same species. Here under the forest uh, tab, we can define the uh, values for this forest, for example, 25 units separated minimum one meter. And when we are done, we just need to uh, select a boundary curve if we already have it uh, created, or maybe choose one of these options to create it uh, on the fly. So I'm gonna uh, disable this OSNAPS, and I will just you know quickly draw the perimeter of this forest. I don't need to close it. If I do right click, the perimeter will close automatically. And if we take a look at this from the 3D model, we can see that the forest have been already created and projected on top of the terrain. And this is something that happens because we have this icon here uh, enabled. If it was off, the forest will be created to the corresponding construction plane, okay? So by default, it's interesting to leave this uh, open. But in some occasion, you may you may not want to project objects on, on landers and terrains, so be aware to uh, switch this on and off uh, depending on each case. Uh, now we have this object, uh, this forest created. We can uh, change this uh, distribution if you if we don't like it. We can uh, select the plants and maybe make it a bit smaller. We can see how this is distributed using the array mode. So let's do an array of five by five. Um, there are different spacing options here, so many parameters to to play with. Uh, and we can also combine different species in in our in our forest, also in rows. And we just need to here increment the number of elements. And in that moment, we'll get you know two options here hanging from the forest, indicating each species that is inside this forest, and the option to change uh, to edit it uh, one by one. So I'm gonna uh, change this group from the forest citrus, and uh, well, change the the size of it, if you like. Okay. Um, all right. So let's let's go on. Let's insert a ground cover, for example, and see how it looks like. And ground covers um, use a different mm, realistic representation that uh, well use a, a method to distribute plants over an area rather than having an ins uh, a singular uh, single object. So when we uh, brush in for the plant database, we can see already species that have this kind of present, uh, representation. So they are appropriate for, for ground covers, All right? So I'm gonna select any of them, um, control the density and plant scale. Also in 2D, we are gonna see them represented as a hatch pattern. And finally, I can select the boundary or draw it from the command line. So I'm gonna draw uh, a rectangular ground cover. Okay, we can see that it has also been projected on top of uh, the terrain. Also, we can modify the boundary from the control points, if we like, at any any moment. Okay, so um, let's see some of the civil work elements, for example, the wall command. So I'm gonna insert a wall similar to this one. Uh, so I'm gonna choose thickness of 20 centimeters, two meters height, I can control here the justification, for example, left, and I'm gonna start drawing uh, from on that uh, side of the park. I'm gonna choose this polyline option, and I'm gonna enable this OSNAPS again, and quickly draw the wall. 
All right. And if we want to make one uh, wall equal to another, there is an option in the in the edit panel that lets us uh, copy properties from another object. Okay, so we choose this option, select the desired wall, and we get the same texture, the same alignment, the same head applied on the onto the other wall. Now we can insert a, a row of elements along this path, for example. So I'm gonna row, uh, run the row command. Um, I'm gonna, I mean, you can either select an object created in the model, or uh, you can browse for one block from the block library. So I'm gonna explore it. We can see here that we've got uh, blocks for uh, benches, uh, beans, boilers, uh, fountains, lighting, okay. Uh, we've got also stones, urban furniture. So there are many, many blocks. And remember that uh, any compatible file in Rhino can be uh, used as a block here. You can actually customize the, well, these shortcuts to browse any file that you've got in your computer. So I'm gonna insert, for example, um, some uh, some lighting objects, for example, uh, this one. And we've got some orientation options here. And under the rows tab, I'm gonna say all uh, well, the total number of units. Let's say that I'm gonna insert six uh, items. And I'm gonna select this path as the distribution uh, option, of course. I don't want these street lights to be placed in the middle of the of the path, so there is an option to move them according to an offset value. So we've got here the axis to distance to the axis, and let's say this two meters, and we'll get them a little bit offset. Okay, maybe we can change the number of units to four, which should be maybe enough. So you can work with these elements in a parametric way at any time. Okay, let's go to the documentation tools. I'm gonna show the model from the from the top. Uh, I'm gonna switch to the 2D representation now. And I'm gonna uh, maybe start with the uh, slope command. Okay, uh, we have seen in the, in the first presentation how to insert photos. We have uh, seen how to insert a couple of um, lists. Maybe we can insert the list of plants first. So we can see the, the total amount of plants that we've got in this project and uh, how it also updates if we do any modification. For example, if we change this array to four, you will notice that the Acer, the number of Acer and Cedrus have uh, has changed as well. Okay. Uh, we check the all the properties of this plant list or lists. Basically, we can see here all the fields to show. Uh, for example, we can enable density which is maybe interesting for the species that are used as a, as a, as a ground cover. And we can also sort these uh, elements, change the uh, order, and um, well, also export that to, to Excel. Okay. Um, we can also insert uh, custom parameters to that list because, um, well, there is an option here under the Rhino document properties. For example, we would like to list the pricing of each, uh, each element, each uh, tree. And under the document properties, we've got, this, we've got this parameter section. So we can add a new parameter called price. We assign it to a category. Data type could be a text or could be actually a currency. And when we click OK, now we can select any item. For example, we can select these two lemon trees. And from the properties panel, we've got this section, parameters, where we can assign a value to these objects. Let's say these are 500. Maybe I can select that other lemon tree. I'm gonna change it to uh, 400. And now when we select the, um, the plan list, we can go to the list of fields and we can see this new parameter that we have added. So I'm gonna enable it and I can see the number of uh, items that have this one value and the other, the other one with a different value. So you can add mm, any data to the geometry and list it in the in this list. Okay. So I'm just going to show the slope command. Basically, this generates uh, a slope based on any of these options. I'm going to select the polyline, and I can select these two points that will be me will measure 
the slope uh, based on the on the dream. Okay, basically it takes the first and last point and calculates the, the percentage of slope. Or we can choose the um, from curves option, so we can choose the same curve as we use for the path and get an idea of the of this uh, slope for the path. Um, maybe we can insert also this plan level. I'm going to select um, this this plan, and in this case, the first number indicates the index of this plan and the uh, number of units on the other side. Okay, we can customize this tag uh, by amount and the ID, and instead of the ID, we can show the initials of the of the plant species. Okay. Uh, all right. Actually, this uh, corresponds to the yeah the index corresponds to the number three as we can see in here. All right, so let's let's move on. Maybe I can show also the uh, plan shadows. Basically, this adds uh, some hatch patterns below the to the grounds of the of the plants, and uh, well, we can select them. We can change the direction. Okay, we can change the, the height as well. But uh, they won't be exactly, they won't follow, these shadows won't follow exactly the um, uh, real shadows according to a uh, geolocation of this project. If we want to know that, I mean, these shadows are basically uh, meant to be used uh, for a, a 2D drawing purpose for showing a nice 2D view of the, of the setting out plan. But instead, we can also enable the sun. This is a Rhino run a feature, as you may know, and we do right click here to uh, open this panel. And when we run the sun command, okay, we base the, well, the lighting of this uh, scene based on, on the geolocation, so we can, uh, well, see how these shadows change according to uh, a daytime and, and a moment of the, of the year. All right, so um, I will finally uh, show how to create a quick uh, virtual tour. So I'm gonna uh, move to the uh, animations tab. And uh, first of all, I need to define a, a path curve for the camera path. And I'm gonna enable uh, a layer where I've got a curve for that purpose. Here it is. And we will do a kind of virtual tour along this uh, curve. So there are many options to uh, well look forward or look to a target point as well. We can change the parameters for the animation from here. We can also enable a season change, plant growth, and, and wind uh, for the animation. But these results, these uh, effects, are only visible when we choose uh, the option to uh, well use the render, uh, the Rhino render, or the current render that we've got uh, in that moment. Okay, so by now I'm just gonna use the Rhino display and see a preview of this of this animation. So I'm gonna click on this button, select that curve. Actually, once I have created it, I have selected it. I can hide it, and now uh, I'm gonna say set this to a total duration of ten seconds, and finally play the animation to see how it will look like. And if I like with the result, I can, you know, uh, render the scene using this Rhino display as we have seen now, or with the other option that of course it will take a longer time to, to produce. Okay, and finally we select the folder where we want to save our animation. Another option, quite fun, is to uh, enable the wall mode. This will put you onto the ground, and with the mouse cursors, you will be able to uh, walk through the project just by uh, well, selecting, clicking on the mouse buttons to go uh, to move forwards or backwards. And this wall mode will detect also the terrain topography, so we'll be able to uh, automatically walk through the through the terrain. 
I click escape to, to go off. And um, I don't know if we'll, I will have time for some, uh, another example of the grasshopper integration. Maybe we'll do one very, very quickly. So as we have seen in the, in the introduction, uh, all the lands uh, elements are available from, grass, uh, from grasshopper. So we can insert plants, uh, forests, ground covers, terrains, uh, and sprinklers and other objects. This lets us connect this geometry with other add-ons in grasshopper. For example, that, uh, that option to connect these elements with uh, Revit aware components when we run uh, lands and, and, and right from, from Revit, we run inside. And uh, maybe I'm gonna show a very quick example of generating some uh, well, some pots under a few plants that we can insert here. So I'm gonna insert plants from this uh, using this paint mode. So uh, basically, I insert a few plants over this drawing. And now I'm gonna reference these plants and I will generate these, uh, these spots according to the, their position, okay? And according to their height. So uh, I can very quickly, uh, well, generate this, this geometry in, in a parametric approach based, based on uh, land elements. And of course, there are unlimited possibilities to do any custom uh, parametric design using this uh, workflow with, with Grasshopper. So, well, I hope you, you have enjoyed this presentation. I'm gonna leave it here. Um, Thank you. Maybe you can explore from the website some of the projects created with uh, land design. So it's up to you to, to navigate through them and see the amazing results that you can, you can achieve. Thank you so much, uh -huh. Francesc. We do have a question and I think okay. you get this question a lot, but I will still uh, ask it. Is land design compatible with Vectorworks? Um, what do you mean? Uh, Can you use land design with Vectorworks, with the program Vectorworks? No, land design is only available on Rhino and on okay. uh, AutoCAD and, and Civil 3D. Okay, mm, too bad. <laughs> but that's something to think about in the future. <laughs> Well, actually, there is an IFC export, maybe through that e that one. I think so. Actually, yeah, maybe with yeah. yeah already have, have Rhino. IFC export. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you have Rhino, then you can uh, uh, use the IFC to move it to yes. import it on Vectorworks. That's what I thought. Great, yes. thank you. That was the only question, but wow, what a great presentation! Thank you so much to <laughs> both of you. Thank you. Well, right. actually, it, it, maybe it's worth mentioning that we have a, an online course starting on May 26. So for those who are interested in uh, that, still, there are still some seats available. Great. Mm -hmm. um, fantastic. Go check it out. Uh, find this course and uh, um, learn yes. more about lens design. I'm here with all the information. Um, you can go and look it up if that works for you. Thank I'm, you, everyone. Thank yeah. you, Novet. And in a specific, Barbara, thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara. I'm sorry <laughs> to take away your screen. Um, <laughs> and uh, I thank everybody for attending. And I want to remind you where you can get Lens Design. But not just that, you can get Visual Art and Lens Design. You can get Rhino, AutoCAD, Civil 3D. Not to mention the rendering program like Enscape and uh, V-Ray, we have it all in one shop. So check us out at novage.com. Thank you so much and have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye, everybody. Okay.